Talking to and from space, from anywhere on the planet, today on Mikey's Lab. Today we have a review of the Rockblock 9603 module. I'm going to go right ahead and say this is not a sponsored video, this is not a paid review. I personally did not buy this module, but a friend of mine did for a project he's working on. Now, I'm not allowed to give you the details of that project yet, but I promise once he gives me the green light, there'll be all kinds of information about it. So lab code up. We're going to learn something today. So let's dive down and take a look at this module and see what you get, because this is not a cheap module. All right, so this is what we're talking about here. Uh, I will probably blur the serial number in the IMEI since, uh, since it needs to be registered in order to work. Uh, it is the Rockblock 9603. Uh, if we take a look at the computer over here, uh, it comes from SparkFun. It is 250 US dollars, which is not cheap. Wow. But on the pro side, I can talk to space. And space can talk to me. So, $250, not that bad. What you get for your $250, though, SparkFun, I need to, uh, I need to kind of, yeah, critique you a little bit here. You're, you're big into the world of makers, but you do not include everything that is necessary to make this work. What you get for your $250, you get the module itself, and then you get this 3.3-volt uh, cable with a custom end on it, which is essentially a useless cable. Uh, the only time that this is any use is if you intend to use this module with a computer. Uh, if you intend to use this with a microcontroller, not the most convenient thing. I guess you could use this cable with a Raspberry Pi, but come on, this thing is like six feet long and a bulky USB end. Come on, spark fun, right? Uh, the previous module to this, the, the one before this, I believe it was called Mark III or Mark II. Um, had well, 0.1 inch headers, which made it much more maker friendly than this does. Now, don't get me wrong, SparkFun will sell you an additional cable that will break that out for you. Um, when we ordered this, SparkFun didn't have that cable, so we had to order it from Rockblock directly, and it's this guy right here, which has the connector and a bunch more pins broken out. I will be honest, uh, since all of this has is basically the 5 volt lines and 3.3 volt serial on it, useless. There is a lot more information coming out of this module than that little USB crappy cable will give you. Uh, so pick one of these up, spark fun, you should have included it. Right, this is not this module is not useful for a maker without it, so it should be included. Uh, the other thing you can buy that we did buy was an external antenna. So all in all, it's a neat module. Let's take a look a little uh, up a little closer because uh, the it has two capacitors on it that are interesting. Because you may be asking yourself what I asked myself. This is uh, the built-in antenna. How can something this small communicate to and from space? Well, part of the answer to that question, if we take a look, I'm just going to go to the microscope here for a second. And if we take a look at this capacitor, this is a 2.7 volt, 5 farad capacitor. No, I am not missing a unit there. It is 5 farads. So these are basically uh, super capacitors that allow for massive EMF burst in order to get through. Now, one of the things that you're going to want to know is that this uses a text-based uh, AT style command like back in the old 1990s modem days uh, command structure in order to make it work. For dramatic effect, this is the command dictionary for that. And 90% of this doesn't apply to that. So one of the first projects that we're going to be doing in the next videos that, that come out of this is we're going to create a hardware wrapper around this. Uh, something that manages the device, puts it to sleep when it can be put to sleep, uh, and make sure that the satellite is visible before we try to send data. If you follow SparkFun, and let's go to the computer here. So if you follow the original developer guide by Rockblock, right, you're going to be sending a message 
through space pretty quickly. And that's just down here. Right, we set it into a specific mode, we tell it we want to send hello world, and we tell it to send. Most of the time, my experience is the, the send is not successful. Uh, you get a string that looks like this back, but it starts with 32 saying no network is available. So you need to manage the network availability now with the breakout cable, not with the USB cable, but with the breakout cable. One of the pins, if we scroll up here, is that's very, very beneficial. Right, is network available signal, right? Which obviously we can tie to an Arduino and use as an interrupt, and it will tell us when and when or when and if a satellite is available to communicate. So we won't try when it doesn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a hardware wrapper around this device uh, because this device needs to be managed. Uh, with, with it, it's not a fire and forget type of a type of a device. You write to it via, uh, via the serial. You hope it goes. You monitor the return code to see if it did go. If not, you keep trying again. If we put an Arduino in between uh, the final project and this, we can actually have a wrapper of a message queue. It can retry on its own. When the queue is empty, it can put the device to sleep to save battery power. Uh, for numerous applications where this could be used, such as autonomous vehicles in the desert, autonomous vehicles in the ocean, autonomous vehicles all over the place. The other big thing that this strikes me as a very big positive for, and $250 is not that much money for it, uh, is with research. So you have sensors scattered all over the place. Uh, you can use these to have the sensors communicate back to a base station. There is lots of oceanographic research going on where, yeah, the, the sensors are out there, yeah, they're collecting data, but you got to get on a boat and go get it. I mean, people are paying six, seven, eight thousand dollars per sensor for these. With a simple module like this, the sensor would be able to broadcast that information back to anywhere. Right? It sends it up into the Iridium Space, uh, Iridium Satellite Network and then comes back down into either a web service that you pull or it gets emailed to you. Uh, that alone seems like a much better system than what there was before. All right, so the other thing that we're definitely going to want to know about this module is the current draw. So what we have set up here uh, is a breadboard with an Arduino and the satellite module itself connected. Uh, this breadboard power supply is feeding nothing to, to this circuit right now. See, the end's empty. All right, so what we're going to do, we have our lab bench power supply. Right, let me see if I can get that. I don't know if you can see the top up here. It's at the 5 volt with a peak of 1 amp. Okay. If we hit 1 amp, I'll raise that up a little higher. All right, so if I go ahead and I power this system up, we can see that it goes to 450 milliamps while the capacitor's charge. Over the course of the next little while, it quickly drops down to 200 milliamp, 170 milliamp. And it looks like we're going to hover around 100, 180, 190 milliamp. Now, it is important to note that this power supply is also feeding an Arduino, which is feeding an FTDI cable. So I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, a good portion of that current is from that. And if you look now, I'm sorry, all of a sudden we're down to 0 0.8, down to 90 milliamp, 80 milliamp. So I'm gonna say it's about 100 milliamp when it's awake and on. Uh, we haven't dropped it to sleep mode yet. Uh, in order to, to see what it takes in sleep mode. Uh, we know that when it's charging, it will take up to 450 milliamps, and it's gonna charge after every attempt to send a message. So it's not a horrible power suck, but for depending on how often you're gonna send messages, this is something you're definitely gonna need to plan for. So all in all, uh, the pros of this module are very simple. I can talk to space, right? I can get a message anywhere in the world. I can get data anywhere from the world, holy crap. 
Uh, the cons of this is it's not easy to use. The cons of it is not it, it's not a fire and forget. And even at two hundred and fifty dollars US, SparkFun has failed to include what you need to make this module useful. Now, granted, the cable from SparkFun we wound up paying twenty bucks for it, which was ostentatiously root price. Um, SparkFun sells for five dollars. All right, five dollars. But really, it should have been included. Right, and I, I'm going to harp on SparkFun again for this because you, you're a maker's website. You're supposed to provide stuff that people, that the parts that people use to build cool projects. I believe those are your own words. So come on, Nathan. Right, if you're going to sell a $250 module, include everything you need to use it effectively. Come on. Right, that that cable should be it should be included at that, that price. Also, a fair warning. Um, when you're trying to buy this module outside of the US, as many of you know I'm Canadian, there is a bit of a hoopla you have to go through. Uh, the US wants to make sure that you're not going to use it to do damage to them or be a national security risk. So you will have to fill out some paperwork, you will have to attest that you are part of an allied country, yada yada yada, that you, you have nothing but the best intentions and give them your firstborn. Yeah, it's a hoopla. Once you get the module though, uh, the, the setup is fairly simple. Right? And even with the USB cable, if you haven't gotten this yet, you'll get up and running pretty quickly. Um, plug the USB cable in, issue a couple AT commands and you're bouncing stuff off of space. You do have to go to the, the website itself and set up a line rental. So there is a monthly fee and then there's a per transaction fee as well. So what you have is essentially 10 pounds right, for uh, per month for a line fee. Think of it like a phone line. Uh, if you read the AT command structure and how this thing communicates, it's very much like a phone. So it's 10 pounds a month, which is roughly 13 American dollars, I think, maybe 15 Canadian. Um, then you buy packages of credits, and the messages that you send consume those credits. So you only pay for what you use, right? And it's not a, you know, I sign up for a three-year term and I have to pay for every month in there. It's more like a pay-as-you-go type cell phone, actually. Um, it, is, it isn't cheap. Nothing about this module is overly cheap, but again, data anywhere in the world, right? So let's dive down to the bench and actually use this module. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab the USB cable that came with it, right, simply because it's the simplest to work with right now. Alright, so we know that this is in, in COM7, so we want serial. Change it to COM7. And the default baud rate for this module is 19200. We ask it for AT, we see that it's okay. We're going to set the mode that we want to use it in, AT percent K0. We get an OK back, we know we're good to go. Let's give it some text to send. So AT plus SBDWT equals... Yeah, let's be different. Said good night moon. And we'll tell it to transmit. And we'll wait to see what the module says. Now the module is going to return a statement that has a bunch of numbers in it, which tells you whether it was successful or not, how many messages have been sent, how many messages are waiting for you, etc. It would need to be parsed out by something that's handling this module. Uh, the first number 32 means that uh, transmission failed because we don't can't see a satellite. So this is what I was talking about before. If I keep trying, eventually it's going to work without moving the module at all. Which I don't understand why, but that just seems to be the way this works. I've also noticed that if you power this from something that isn't USB that has a little more power to it than your USB port, it tends to be more successful too, which is again why this little cable is important and why SparkFun should have included it. Okay, so we got a status code of two. I don't think I've ever gotten that one before. I'm going to go ahead and look in the manual and find out what two means. So apparently what two means is the message was sent, 
but it has no idea where on the planet we were. Uh, when I show you the message that, that gets transmitted, you'll see that usually there is a longitude and latitude coordinates involved as well. So this is what we get from space. All right, the good night moon message that we sent, the data that is in it, right? Uh, you see the iridium longitude and latitude. Obviously, this is not an accurate location. Uh, that's why we got a code two instead of a code zero because it didn't know where we were. But uh, this can also be binary data, right? A binary data stream that is stored into a web service that the, the rock block network will give you access to when you, have, when you rent a line. And you can obviously pull the data that way. So all in all, this is a, a really cool module. Um, it is expensive, but you can talk to space. You can get data to and from a satellite network with a, with a tiny, tiny device that is uh, relatively easy to use. Now stay with us for the next video because we're going to create a hardware wrapper layer around it. Uh, using an Arduino to create a message queue to manage interrupts based on when satellites are available when they're not, to parse the returns of the, the module in the serial command part, and give us an I2C interface to turn this into a fire and forget device. Thank you for joining me in the lab today. I hope you learned something, and I will see you next time.